compassion is the new frontier of science in the sense that scientists try to understand why it is that we care for each other, why we want to cooperate with, you, with each other, why we have empathy for each other. Uh, and, and neuroscientists are studying this phenomenon because it's a real biological phenomenon in us that we want to have compassion for each other. We also want to have compassion for the environment we live in, the, the ecology, the world around us, the, the ecosystems. And the funny thing is that science and civilization and culture has been very much about the opposite direction, going in, in the other way, saying that the world is a desert, that uh, every human being should be on his own. And that, that has been sort of what we've learned from economy, from ecology and, and all those sciences. And now we are discovering the fact that, no, we care about each other, we care about the planet. And this is also the key to how we can run our society, our production, our consumption in a way that is, uh, that is uh, agreeable to the planet, that we are much more oriented towards liking what we do, liking each other, cooperating, building communities, uh, using old knowledge that, that, that normal people have about how the world functions, rather than thinking that we can run everything from a desk in a, in a headquarter. So there's a big revolution coming now in food, in energy production, in how to manage societies, how to manage the commons, the shared resources. And this revolution is going away from the headquarters, from, from the desks and from, from the sort of the central offices, and putting much more emphasis on the peer-to-peer -peer relations between everyday pe uh, people uh, and the civil society, the way that people can self-organize. And this is a big revolution happening, and the internet is the first great technological example, but they will come now with food, with energy, and many other things. We will see this compassion for each other, compassion for the world around us is the key to the future. To like each other and to want to share and to want to cooperate with other people, it's not the invention of Western culture. You find it in monkeys. So it is, it is there, uh, and, and we just need to liberate the willingness to cooperate and to compassion and to have compassion for others in human beings. This is a new frontier of science. And just like older frontiers of science created the superpowers of the mechanical age, of the electrical age, of the atomic age, and so on, this frontier of science, the frontier of compassion, will also produce a new superpower. And of course, this is wonderful. Because the superpowers of compassion will not be countries like Denmark, it will be countries with a bright, bright and glorious future. Because they have an old tradition and an old culture of cultivating compassion and knowing how to live a good life. And of course, it means that India will have a bright and glorious future as the superpower of compassion. It will take a few decades before you're there, uh, I'm sure, and, and I think you will repeat many of the mistakes we made in our part of the world with uh, with, with the middle class becoming arrogant and idiotic when they become a little rich. But I'm sure that you can overcome this and become the superpower uh, of compassion for the future. And I'm sure that uh, Mahatma Gandhi's uh, old re reply to a question from a journalist will then uh, be seen as even more prophetic than it was today. He was asked, uh, Mr. Gandhi, what do you think about Western civilization? And he answered, oh, that would be a very nice idea. Uh, and <laughs> this will be the answer to give in the future. Thank you very much. India is a, is a country with a long and beautiful cultural tradition and a long spiritual and human and, and in terms of values, a, a, a richness and, and, and a sort of a maturity that we don't really have in the West. And I think India has enormous amounts of, of offerings for the rest of the world when compassion becomes more essential. And I think in a way you could say that India will become the superpower of compassion. Just like in Europe or the United States you had the superpowers connected to earlier leaps in scientific and technological development like the mechanical or the electrical or the atomic age. Now we will have the age, we are entering the age of cooperation and compassion. And, as, and I hope that India will become a superpower. And I hope also that part of the reason that India will become a superpower in this is that they will learn from smaller countries like Denmark that do have a tradition for, uh, that are highly educated uh, and, and democratically engaged uh, population can be a driver of good 
uh, energy systems like windmills, good hospital systems, good educational systems, that much of which made Denmark rich was in fact that we had a, a, a population that was so highly skilled and educated that it demanded a good life and that created around it an industry for serving the hospitals, an industry for serving education and windmills and, and all that, uh, which made us rich. So we became rich in a sense because we wanted a good life. And, I, and that lesson I hope we can bring to other parts of the world.